Are you ready to invest in yourself today? Welcome to the Wealth Builders Podcast. Where investment leader Billy Epperhart teaches you how to build wealth through applied biblical wisdom. Scripture says in Deuteronomy 8.18, Remember the Lord, your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. At Wealth Builders, our goal is to teach you how to build wealth through applied biblical wisdom in your finances, your business, and your investments. So communication is not what you say, it's what the other person perceives you as saying or doing. So communication is not just what you say, it's what the other person perceives you as saying or doing. So sometimes even with a difficult employee or somebody you may be dealing with that they're, they're not seeming to get it. I remember Andrew Wirtz and I the first couple of times, and um, I, is it okay if I tell some vulnerable stories? I've <laughs> but I remember the first time he and I had some maybe difficult times. And you kind of walk through those together. And here's the thing, you have to give, I have to give him space, he has to give me space, and we have to learn to grow together. I can't force him. I can't force a round peg in a square hole or a square peg in a round hole. I have to be aware of what it's going to take, hopefully, to get us there. And one time I had a meeting with Mike and Carrie, and I'm using them because these are the main leaders here. I had a meeting with Mike and Carrie. We're all sitting around the room, and it wasn't going well, was it, Carrie? And it wasn't going well. And so I had to ask everybody to leave the room. And, uh, huh? Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm not going to say anything else to say that. So the point is, is that I think the be able to communicate and you have to, you have to slowly bring people with you if they're not coming with you. And I'm going to say this, sometimes on your teams, some, not all the time, but occasionally on your teams, it's okay if somebody doesn't fit. And what you don't want to do if you can keep from it is you don't want to have to let them go the best place to do if they're, if they're willing to learn and grow is just reposition. But most of the time, you can carry people with you. If you give them time, they give you time, then you can move together where you need to go. So that's on communication is building rapport. And this is something I use with these guys. I've never said it out here, I don't think, to any of you in any other meetings. But I just want to say this. And I'd like you to remember this one. If you don't remember anything else I said, just remember this one. Learn to touch your downline. I used to say learn to work in your downline, but I've changed that because nothing takes the place in your life. In fact, I'd say one of the greatest business principles I ever learned was nothing takes the place, not just leadership. I'm making a distinction here. In business, one of the greatest things I learned is that nothing takes the place of personal observation. Nothing takes the place of personal observation. So does that mean you don't trust your downline? No, 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 no. Didn't say you don't trust them. It's just there's times when it's important that you learn to touch the people that are down there. And when if you're working and shaking hands and meeting people that may not report to you every day, but they're in your organization, they're down in your department somewhere, learn to get around and kind of know at least some of those in your downline and here's what I want to say about that is if you're touching your downline, then it's your job not to uncover their upline. You got to be careful if you're touching the downline, what you're promising to them, because if you promise them something that uncovers their upline, then that's not good either. Do you understand that? So learn to touch your downline. And then the last thing, I have two more things, but I'm getting close to out of time here. Let me give you this one real quick, and then I'll end with the other one, is... So, here, so here's what I've given you. Self-awareness, communication, be the thermostat instead of the thermometer. And then the next one is focus on personal development. Now, I learned this particular quote uh, in my 20s, and that's true. I'm the gospel truth. I learned it in my 20s. I'm only, what, 39, so that's just a couple years ago. But here it is. Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. If you'll focus on personal development, it causes you to not only be more self-aware that we talked about earlier, 
But also remember this, and I want you to hear me loud and clear. What comes to your life, I'm convinced what comes to my life and what comes to your life is attracted, not pursued. So the more that I work on my personal development and my own personal growth, then the things that God has, has planned for me, the things that, are in, that, I'm, that God has in my purpose, in my calling, those things begin to be attracted to your life. Psalms 512 says that favor surrounds you as a shield, right? So favor surrounds you as a shield, but what happens inside that shield, favor, you're covered with favor, what's ha what happens inside it? There should be a magnet inside of the favor shield that is pulling things to your life. And that's why when I see people, sometimes they're pushing too hard for something. They're pushing too hard to try to get something, to try to obtain something. You have to be careful when you do that because you end up with something you don't want most of the time. So you have to realize that God has those divine connections and Kairos moments on your life. So if you're focusing on your own personal development, then, then the things that God wants to come to you and the things that you need to come to you, maybe you even have dreams about, those things begin to be attracted to your life. And, and so if you focus on personal development and then focus on personal development for your team, not just, not just for yourself. So focus on personal development for your team and there can be a variety of ways that you do that, but I think it's important that you lead your team with some degree of personal development, and you need to learn in that process to literally be a player coach. Have that mindset of being a player coach when you're doing that. And then the last thing that I want to say is, and I talked about, this is what I mentioned in chapel, but I want to say it here today, and then we're going to do some Q&A is you serve your way to promotion. You serve your way to promotion. And in the modern society, if you came from the corporate arena and you worked in the really in a larger setting in a corporate world, the serve your way to promotion is just exactly the opposite of what they teach you. And really, if you want to be real candid about it, it's exactly the opposite of what, what's modeled to you. Exactly the opposite. So you have to kind of, it's more cutthroat and you have to push your way in. But in this case, you serve your way to promotion. And I'll end with this passage. It says in Mark chapter 10, verse 35, then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him saying, this is New King James, teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. And he said to them, what do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, grant us that we may sit one on your right hand and the other on your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink and be baptized with the baptism that I'm to be baptized with? And that particular question honestly is pregnant with meaning. It's just, I mean, it's, it's loaded. And they said to him, we're able. Hmm. And so Jesus said to them, you will indeed drink the cup that I drink, and with the baptism I'm baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it's for those whom it is prepared. Wow. So it's for those that's been prepared, and when the ten heard it, they began to be greatly displeased with James and John. But Jesus called them to himself and said to them, you know that those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them and the great ones exercise authority over them. One of the things that attracted me to Andrew Walmack Ministries, I mean, most of you know this by now, but I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Paul Milligan. And Paul's the one that opened the door and invited me, called me and all that. But the truth is, if you observe who our founders are, Andrew and Jamie Walmack, they exemplify what this verse is talking about. I've never been around anybody more humble and more authentic in my life. Now, that doesn't mean that Andrew can't have an opinion or two, because he does. But as far as being authentic and walking in humility, I have never been around a leader in my life that is more that way. And I've been around, truthfully, I have. I'd be lying if I tell you I hadn't. I've been around quite a few. 
And I'm telling you that the, they exemplify those that don't lord it over them. And one of the reasons I think this ministry is in its goal, coming into its golden age, and one of the reasons that we can all latch on to what the vision and the heart of this ministry is, is because we have leaders here that exemplify this. And, it, and that, that anointing and that attitude literally trickles from the top down to us. And so here's what will happen in this organization. If you don't walk that way yourself, it'll show up. And you'll know it. I mean, somebody might be in a position. It could be somebody above you. But if they're walking something that is the opposite of that, it'll be like a flashing red light because it'll be so different than the culture and the exemplification that Andrew and Jamie have given us in leadership. They exemplify this. And then he says, Yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. Any of you know me personally and behind the scenes and have to, I relate to you personally, you know I'm big on order. I'm bigger on how things flow. But I'm not big on somebody, including me, or including you, thinking more highly of themselves than they ought to think. If you want to be promoted and you want to go where God wants you to go, you serve your way to promotion. And what serving your way to promotion means in, 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 the, in the context of this scripture is that you learn to help and be a blessing to other people, your team that's around you, others. And, and can, I, can I just be candid and bold enough to say, it's not about you. And it's not about Billy. It's about God, Jesus, and the will of God and the purpose of God and us here to serve that. And very candidly, it's about Andrew and Jamie and us being here to serve them. Let me just tell you right now, if you can't serve the people who are leading you, then you probably need, I would usually say, an attitude adjustment. But here I'll say something a little bit different. You need a heart adjustment. You need to, you need to get that right in your own heart because, because what God wants to bring in your life if you continue, if your heart continues to be wrong and not in alignment with where God wants you to be, then wherever you think you're going will be stopped. I see it happen. I've been in the business school since 2011 and uh, been teaching in the business school. Paul called me in 2010, started teaching in the spring of 11. I think that's right. In the spring of 11. And, um, and I've seen all kinds of people come through business school. And the ones that are the worst are those that are always trying to self-promote themselves to something. Can I tell you something? God has people for your life you have never met. And when somebody is serving their way through what God, where, where God wants them to be, God will put people in your life that can take you to wherever it is his purpose and his plan is for your life. And you don't have to kick the door down. You don't have to force your way in. You don't have to go places you're not invited. That God will put people in your life that will take you there. And so if you believe that and you walk by faith with that, sometimes it looks like in your own personal life. You know, I saw uh, Tiger Woods do this one time on television many years ago and he was putting and I remember the cameras were there and the golf commentators were talking real quiet and he puts the ball and I remember the commentator saying man he putted the ball completely away from the hole and the other commentator goes yeah but look there's a there's a hump on that green over there and I'm trying to see it on television you can't see it and all of a sudden the ball turns around comes right back in and it's a hole in one Sometimes when you serve your way to promotion, it looks like you're putting away from the hole. So what I want to do is encourage you on these tips for leaders, managers, and we need to, we need to learn together to work and uh, together on what the will of God and the purpose of God is. And here's what I've learned. If we'll serve the will of God for this place and serve the will of God for what, who Andrew and Jamie are and what direction they're giving us, if we'll do that, and we'll do our roles in that, God always takes care of each one of us, and he also will take care of the ministry because the heart and the attitude of the ministry is right. And so to me, that's what produces culture. That, that's where culture trumps vision. And so the last thing I'll say with this, and then I'm gonna, you guys go ahead and come up. 
uh, Andrew and Mike and Kerry. Um, the last thing I'll say is that if we walk with that attitude together as a group and as a team, the Lord will take care of stuff that we don't even know about. We hope you learned something of lasting value today from this Wealth Builders podcast. If you'd like any tools, teachings, or resources mentioned in the podcast, you'll find them online at wealthbuilders.org. Wealth Builders exists to teach you how to build wealth through applied biblical wisdom in your finances, your business, and your investments. Wealth Builders is a nonprofit organization. We depend on your donations to keep this podcast running. Please consider donating to us on wealthbuilders.org.